Hello, I'm Adam uh, and I work at uh, Oracle, MySQL, uh, developing boost geometry. Um, oh, I cannot start now, but this is basically my introduction. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we are developing uh, at boost geometry, we are developing uh, algorithms. Um, and data structures which are then used uh, by MySQL to provide um, oh, geometrical computation when you're calling um, SQL MM or SQL SFA features like you know ST intersection or something like that. Then internally uh, MySQL calls boost geometry functions. <laughs> um, only the simple ones, like boxes and points. Uh, polygons are uh, are 2D. Um, the library allows it. I mean, the interface allows it to 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 be expanded this way, but we are not there yet. Right. Okay, you're ready to go. Um, okay, so again, uh, hello, I'm Adam. Um, oh. <laughs> um, welcome to the talk about Boost Geometry R3. Um, for those of you who don't know, Boost Geometry is uh, a C++ library, part of Boost C++ libraries. Um, and we provide uh, primitives, algorithms, and uh, and spatial index for you to use in your C++ code. Uh, and the library is used by MySQL uh, for GIS features. Uh, the R3 is a self-balanced uh, tree, um, which is used for spatial searching and KNN, KNN searching. Um, and there are various uh, balancing algorithms or various ways how, how the R3 can be created. Um, when you are putting elements one by one, then a tree is balancing itself. Uh, and there are also a class of algorithms uh, which are used to create the R3 from a number of elements at once. And this is called packing or bulk, bulk insertion algorithms. Um, and the, the specific features of boost geometry impl implementations are uh, listed on the slide. So uh, the class is in boost geometry index namespace. Uh, it allows you to store your own user defined types. Uh, by default, it supports any type adapted to, pos to, to point, box, or segment concept from boost geometry library and also. Uh, supports uh, pairs and tuples. There are three balancing algorithms. I'll show them later. Uh, the nodes, uh, the size of a node is defined by the numbers of objects stored in a node, um, as opposed to, um, let's say, database implementations of the R3 where the size of a node is defined by the page size. Um, and it allows you to perform advanced queries. I also uh, show them later what that means and iterative queries. Um, so here are the examples of uh, internal structures of the of R3s uh, created in different ways. Uh, linear, quadratic, and R star three versions are um, are the ones created using balancing algorithm, uh, and packing is. Is, uh, is, uh, is the packing algorithm we use. Uh, it's a version of STR algorithm, so sort by recursive variation. Um, and as you can see, the, uh, the, structure, the internal structures are different. Um, uh, some of them will be better for searching because uh, some of them, in some of them there is more overlap 
of the nodes. Um, some of them have big nodes, some of them have smaller nodes. So um, the, the less overlap, the less number of nodes, and the uh, smaller nodes are better for searching later. Uh, but yeah, how you can expect, uh, it takes more time to create a better structure of the R tree. So these are the times. In general, the more time you spend on creation, less time you will spend on searching. Right, so there's a trade-off. Uh, and depending on your, your application, you have to choose one or the other. And packing is, uh, the tree created with packing algorithm is uh, the best in all situations, but on the other hand, you have to know all of the elements in front of the creation. Uh, and there's also one more uh, decision you have to make before creating the R tree, which is the size of the node. Size of the yeah, size of the nodes, the number of elements stored in the node, uh, uh, which will be influenced by your knowledge about the domain you're working with, and uh, uh, specifically um, about the, the the kind of data you're working with. So for non-overlapping uh, elements, the tree will behave differently. Like uh, here is uh, here are times of creation. Um, um, for number of elements stored in a node. So uh, here is nothing uh, interesting, actually. Just m maybe just that uh, the tree is, uh, the creation of the tree is longer for all algorithms when there is overlap. But uh, if you see the searching, then here we have something interesting. It's, it seems that uh, for overlapping nodes, uh, for, for robotic elements, if you have too small number of elements stored in a node, then you increase the time of search. So the, the more overlap you have in your data, the bigger the node should be, basically. Uh, later we, we can talk about it uh, after the talk, wh why that is. And by overlapping, I mean like physically overlapping in 2D, like uh, for instance, if you have big objects overlapping each other, or you have uh, objects in higher dimensions, then there is more probability that they will overlap. Uh, okay, so now a few examples. Um, um, I, I'm using the data from this website. Uh, so, here are the includes and some namespaces I'll be using in the code. Um, uh, the second one is only if you clone the repository from, uh, from GitHub, because uh, it's, uh, it's a part of the code which we call extensions. Uh, but it's only for uh, loading a shapefile. Um, Yes, and uh, this are, these are basic definitions of uh, types I'll be using. Uh, in boost geometry, uh, the default way of defining the, the coordinate systems that are used in data are, uh, are part of a point type. So here's how you can create uh, a type capable of storing uh, Cartesian points, spherical points, and uh, geographic points. I'll be using the, the last one uh, in the examples. Uh, there are other ways uh, how we can affect the, the algorithm, algorithms and uh, uh, also like, uh, use different spheroids uh, and things like that. But uh, uh, for the time being, uh, let's assume that when I'm using geographic points, it's WGS. Uh, 84, and I'm calculating stuff on the surface of ellipsoid. So we are not doing any projections. We are we are on the surface of, of ellipsoid, which is good for a class of problems that are global, where uh, you cannot choose the best projection, uh, and you just want to stay. Uh, you could approximate the the globe with a sphere, but here I'm I'm showing the geographic. Um, no, how, how, to, how to deal with geographic data. Um, yeah, so uh, for this, you'll need the, uh, for, for loading the, um, 
the data uh, I'm showing you need the extensions, but you can do it however you like. You can write your own uh, shapefile shape importer or fill the data, whatever you like. Uh, and the first example will be um, uh, to find points which are near another set of points, basically. So uh, this is the data from, from this website. One is uh, populated places, which are defined like uh, um, a, a point representing uh, a place where uh, at least 1,000 people live or something like that. And the green dots are airports. So I'm searching uh, um, whether or not some airports are near the populated places like that. Uh, and by small area, I mean a box. So uh, here is, a, let's say, naive example, which has uh, quadratic complexity. And what I'm doing is I'm iterating over all the places, then all of, over all of the airports, and I'm checking if uh, an airport is covered by a box, this small box I created. And then I'm pr printing a result. So um, I will show the timings later for the other algorithm, but uh, as you may expect, quadratic uh, complexity we can do better. So for this purpose, we create uh, R3. Um, uh, storing points, and this will be R star variant, storing four elements per node. Uh, and I'm calling insert for all of the airports. Um, which forces the RT to use balancing algorithm uh, instead of uh, uh, packing because I'm inserting one by one. Uh, and then I'm iterating over all the places and uh, performing a query, uh, passing covered by predicate to the query function uh, of the R tree and uh, taking the result as uh, an output iterator, which in this case is back insert iterator. Uh, but we can do better because we know the data up front. Um, so I'm creating the same R3 but using packing algorithm. And for this purpose, I'm passing the iterators to, to the range into the constructor of the R3. So here we have the, all of the R3 created with packing algorithm, which should be faster. And then I'm using uh, query iterators instead of a query function, which uh, which iterates uh, over, la lazily iterates over the, the results. So you can, for instance, stop it at some point if you like. Uh, and if you, <coughs> sorry, if you prefer working with ranges instead of uh, iterators, then the R3 also supports it. So I'm just passing a range of elements, which are then stored in the R3 using packing algorithm. And then uh, instead of uh, standard for each, I'm using uh, for based, if uh, range based for loop. Um, and for that, I'm creating uh, a range, a queried range using uh, range adapter, similar to boost range adapters. So what's the, the red now uh, is, uh, is a range representing a pair of iterators, basically just as it was on, on the previous slide. Um, and here's my result. So some pairs of points which are close to each other. Uh, so the next example, which will be more interesting maybe. So now I'm a traveling salesman and I want to uh, go through all of the airports on the world uh, as fast as possible, right? So classic problem, um, um, again, oh, sorry. Um, so this is my initial uh, preparation uh, where I have uh, airports. I'll be storing uh, the result in a line string uh, containing geographic points. And I also need a structure, helper structure for um, to store flags whether or not uh, I visited an airport or not. Uh, here is a 
one of the possible solutions, which is the, the classic one, which is called greedy uh, heuristic. So basically, I'm choosing the closest airport from a starting point, and then from that, I'm choosing the closest airport again and again, 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 and again. And I'm doing it, it uh, until I have all of the airports. So yeah, until I have all of the airports, I'm uh, traversing all of the, checking all of the airports, checking the ones which are not visited, uh, calculating the distance, is picking the smallest one. And then when I have the smallest one, then I'm adding it to the, uh, to the solution. Uh, but again, the previous algorithm uh, is, uh, has quadratic complexity, so we can do better. Um, and here, uh, I'm using the R3 for that. Uh, I'm storing a pair of uh, my point and an index. I need an index to, uh, in order to access the flags, these the flags. Uh, so I'm storing like a pair. This works by, by default. And uh, I could create um, a vector of pairs first, but, but I decide to do it on the fly using uh, boost range adapters. So here I'm creating a, a range representing, uh, oh, first transforming uh, or indexing airports with an index starting from zero, and then transforming this uh, range of indexed airports uh, into range of pairs. This is what you can do with boost range adapters. Um, so I have all, all of the uh, data needed in, in my R3, and then I'm doing again the same uh, until I have all of the uh, all of the points. Um, I'm performing query, but this time I'm not traversing all of the um, all of the airports to search for a uh, for the closest point, but using the R3 for that. And I'm passing the nearest predicate, and I need so I need uh, the nearest point one nearest point, which also satisfies uh, um, this condition that it is not visited, right? And then I have one in the result. I'm passing uh, as output iterator. I'm simply passing the pointer. Uh, and I'm putting the, the result in, in the root line string and setting a flag. And that's it. Um, and this is my result. So, so a traveling salesman went through all the airports, at some point traversing the, the anti-meridian, so the daytime uh, change line. Uh, yeah, so this this looks good, and the the whole uh, route is like four hundred thousand kilometers long. Um, and this is uh, some benchmark of both uh, algorithms. The one with quadratic complexity is gray. Um, and as you can see, uh, the solution using R3 is behaving better, right? And that's it from my, from me. Thank you. <laughs> and there are three minutes. Thank you. We have some time left. Yeah. Let's say about three minutes for questions. Any questions that you want to sort of throw at him? <laughs> Hi. Uh, are there any questions uh, for you that you want to sort of ask the crowd? What do you want Me? from them? How they, can they help you? Um, probably to uh, check out the boost geometry. Try to do something interesting with it. Like if you have a problem uh, to solve, just consider uh, trying boost geometry and, and then maybe share a feedback or something like that. There is one question or two questions. Could you speak up a little bit, please? Um, so we're talking about this one, okay? 
Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> um, so the uh, the objects representing the internal nodes of the tree are in fact, as you said, uh, boxes or rectangles. However, in leaf nodes, so at the lowest level, uh, I can store various things, and I've chosen to uh, allow to store um, simple geometries like points, boxes, uh, or segments. So, uh, because Otherwise, you'd be forced to, for instance, represent a point as a box, right? And then you have a duplication of data, basically. Uh, so th this, is, this is why uh, it is possible uh, in Boost to just store points. And uh, the R tree is parameterized, like uh, it allows you to pass uh, uh, data type uh, or value type uh, in compile time as a um, template argument. Sorry? Uh, no, no, no. It's only it's only a matter of storing uh, data in uh, in in leaf nodes. We can we can talk uh, about it more after because. Unfortunately, uh.